Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, for the Study STEM Programs webinar at the University of Guelph. We'll just give everybody another moment or two to just join us before we officially start. I can see some participants still trickling in, and that's great. Welcome to everybody who's here with us so far. And just while we wait, wait for a moment, I invite all of you that are here already to just open up that Q&A button and type in the name of the city or the province or even country if you're joining us from outside of Canada, but wherever you happen to be watching this webinar from, please let us know. And don't be shy, go ahead, open up that Q&A and just type in where you're from. And feel free to let us know as well what major or program you applied to as well. Perfect, we've got a couple people joining us from Toronto, interested in biomedical science, engineering, food science, animal biology. That was my program. I'll be touching on that shortly too. Someone from BC, awesome. Wildlife biology, Waterloo, Markham. This is great. Thank you so much for putting those in there. A couple people interested in the animal related majors. It looks like that's a popular theme here. Zoology, animal biology again. A couple people for the engineering. That's great. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much for putting that in there. Um, I'll join you too. I'm coming to you from the city of Guelph, which is in Ontario. And although it's uh, March, it's been unseasonably mild and warm, which I'm not going to complain about. But um, that's really great to. Um, to see what you've put in there so far. So it's incredible to see the range of places. So thank you for sharing that with us. So I think we can officially begin now um, that we're just past seven o'clock here. So uh, hello again to everybody and welcome to the University of Guelph's presentation today on our science, technology, engineering and math programs, also known as STEM. My name is Pervy and I'm the main host of this webinar today, uh, but I am joined by a whole team of people connected with the university who you'll get to meet very soon. We're so excited to have you join us and learn more about these incredible program areas at the University of Guelph, but also we'll share a bit about the geography of the area um, of where we're located and some fun facts about the university itself. We know so many of you are joining us from different regions and time zones around the country as we've seen. So again, we really appreciate you taking the time to visit with us today and learn how Guelph can play a significant role in your future. So I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that the University of Guelph resides on the land of the Between the Lakes Treaty Number no. 3, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We say this as a reminder of our responsibility that we have to the land where we live, learn, and work. So today's presentation will be about one hour, and we'll also have some time after that for some questions, uh, Q&A, based on what we're seeing in the, in the chat and what we know incoming first-year students usually want to hear about. So we'll cover some quick facts about our community, features of our university, including the academic elements of the STEM programs. Uh, you're going to hear from various students enrolled in those subject areas as well, and what your next steps will be towards becoming a Guelph student. So we won't take live questions um, during the presentation. So of course, we'll just ask that all cameras and microphones remain off um, until the very end. Uh, but please feel free to use that Q&A function throughout the presentation. And my wonderful colleague, Julia, from the admissions team is here with us today, and she'll be monitoring and answering your questions behind the scenes um, for us. So please make sure you take full use and definitely don't leave today without getting all of your questions answered. So a little bit about me as your host, and then I'll pass it over to Hillary, who's another staff member from the engineering department. And after that, our students will hop on camera shortly after. So I'm a staff member now at the university, but I'm also University of Guelph alumni. So I came to Guelph years ago when I turned 18 and I moved here as an overseas student. So I was living in Malawi, which is in East Africa. Uh, and I studied animal biology myself, as many of you have shown interest in uh, in the Q&A there, uh, with hopes of becoming a veterinarian. And um, and plans change and that, that actually isn't where life took me, but my education is in that field. I also did two years at our regional campus in Ridgetown and I picked up my diploma in veterinary technology. Um, and I did work as a registered veterinary technician at vet hospitals throughout the Kitchener, Waterloo and Guelph region for about 10 years before doing a career change and then working at the university, which is my old stomping ground. So it's great to be back on campus. 
And my G reason why, or the reason that I said yes, back when I was um, applying to universities, so the reason I said yes to accepting my offer to Guelph was one, because of the program. I knew that the vet school at Guelph is a top ranked school, um, it being number one in Canada. So that was an obvious choice for me. But also when I lined up all of the brochures of the schools that I was considering, because I couldn't at the time as an international student, just pop over for a quick campus tour or attend an open house or have a rep come to my school. So it really was judging a book by its cover. Um, and of all the schools, of all the brochures that I was looking at, I was just most attracted to the Guelph book. And it was just an intuitive feeling that really served me well. I don't think I could have been any happier with my choice. It was a wonderful place to do my undergraduate degree. And right now I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague in engineering, uh, Hillary, to introduce herself. Thanks, Pervy. I am Hillary Royackers, like Pervy had said. I am the engineering recruitment officer. I have worked in engineering at Guelph since 2017. I have a little bit of a different background than Pervy does. It's not as, as Guelphy, but I do live just north of Guelph in Bowood, Ontario. Um, I have quite a mixed background. I've gone to a lot of different colleges for different things. I was one of those students that didn't really quite know where they fit in um, until I really pursued a passion. And that was sort of in the arts. And that's marketing, photography, uh, web design, and over, overall just content creation. I love making things online. Um, um, similar to what Pervy said, all the print stuff that sort of attracted her to Guelph, I helped sort of make some of that for engineering as well. Um, and my G reason why is the green campus. It's a very beautiful place to come out and visit. So if you do get a chance to come to campus, then I definitely recommend that. Awesome. Thank you. And of course, as I mentioned, we are joined by some currently enrolled students uh, that can speak to each of the STEM areas that we cover today from the student perspective. Um, so I'll invite everybody on screen uh, now, if you just wanna turn your cameras on, just take a few seconds to introduce yourself, your hometown and your major, just in order of the photos. And we'll start with Raphael. Hello everyone, my name is Raphael. I'm a third year mechanical engineering student and I'm from Mississauga, Ontario. Hey everyone, I am Rashi. I am a fourth year software engineering major with a statistic minor and a co-op. Uh, I'm originally from India, but Guelph has been my home for the past three years. Hey everybody, I'm Laura. I am graduated from my undergrad now, but I majored in human kinetics and I minored in nutrition and I'm from King City, Ontario. Hi everyone, I'm Amelia. I'm a second year biological and pharmaceutical chemistry major and I'm from Pickering, Ontario. Hi everyone, my name's Emma. I am in my third year of environmental engineering, minoring in project management, and I'm from Brantford, Ontario. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Gage and I am from Aurora, Ontario, and I'm in my third year of mechanical engineering. Wonderful. That's great. So thank you to all my student panelists for joining us, even in the middle of your very busy midterm season. They all volunteered to be here and share, share their stories with you because they were just in your shoes just a few years ago. So hopefully all of our audience members will be able to benefit and learn um, some new things from all of you today. So a few fun facts about Guelph. Uh, if you look at the map, uh, Guelph is the big red dot there. So we're very close. We're about one hour away from Toronto and about 45 minutes from Pearson International Airport. For those of you that are from out of province or out of country, that is usually where you would land. The other two red dots are our smaller sister campuses located in Ontario as well. So one is Ridgetown that I mentioned. I studied there as well. And the other one is in Toronto and it's Guelph Humber. Guelph is a great mid-sized city rated as one of the top places to live across the whole country. And it's also known as one of the safest. As someone who's lived here for nearly 20 years now, I can vouch for what a beautiful atmosphere it is. We have a river and a lake in the city for a beach day. We have sports arenas and stadiums and lots of small and large events happening year round that just make it a really vibrant place to be. And our university is considered mid-sized. So there are those that are much bigger than us and there are those schools that are much smaller. But, um, you know, I always find when you're living alone for the first time, especially at 17, 18 years old, um, having a place that's really easy to navigate and that's a comfortable and digestible size uh, with lots of outdoor spaces to just study or hang out with your friends, um, that was kind of key, at least for me. Um, and our campus is known for being one of the most beautiful and attractive in Canada. We do also enjoy having a well-known reputation, especially for research, where we are the number one school to receive the highest amount of funding in that area. We're also ranked in the top five for the range of diversity of our academic programs that we offer. 
And of course, our veterinary medical school, as I mentioned earlier, is ranked number one in the country and fifth in the world. Here are some terms you're going to hear today uh, from myself and from the students that you may not be familiar yet, or maybe you've heard and it's just uh, it's hard to, to fully grasp. So I'm going to explain these with an example. So your degree program, your major and your minor, what are those? So your degree program is the name of the degree that you graduate with and it will show up on your parchment. So for example, if you wanted to earn a Bachelor of Computing degree, that's the name of your degree. And then within that, there's going to be an area that you specialize in, and that's what we call a major. And that's where you take about 75% of your courses, typically in that subject area. And then this next part is completely optional. But if you have right now, or you, you develop as you attend university, a secondary area of academic interest, and you want to formally pursue about 10 courses in that subject area, we then call it a minor, and that will show up on your transcript. But it's important to know that that is completely optional. So your degree program could be, this is an example, the Bachelor of Computing. Within that, you would specialize in an area um, and here we've written computer science. You take about 75% of your courses uh, relating to computer science. And then if you wanted to add on a minor, business is a popular one, but we've got over 60 different options here at the university. So there's uh, lots that you can choose from. Business is a popular one. It intersects with a lot of fields. So, um, you know, it just adds to your portfolio when you graduate and it will show up on your transcript as well as a formal, formal minor, which is just that smaller secondary area of specialization. I did not take a minor. So again, completely optional. Co-op might also be a term some of you haven't heard of. I know that I didn't know what that was while I was living overseas until I got here. But co-op is an option that you can see if your program is available in. Not every single one will offer it. But if it is, and if you qualify for it, and it's just based on your admission average, then you get the opportunity to spend some terms at a full-time paid job, and then other terms back in class on campus studying. This way you would get about four to five work terms in and you can actually earn while you learn and you get industry experience, references and a professional network before you even graduate. If your program is not available in co-op, there are still plenty of experiential learning opportunities for all students here to get involved and still give you those hands-on skills. Now I'll show you what a sample co-op schedule might look like. So in this here, if you are a co-op student, it does usually extend your duration of study to about five years, as opposed to four years if you're in the non-co-op um, stream. So in this particular schedule, you'll see that your first two years, you're fully in class. It just says academic term. So in your fall and your winter semester, um, and then you get that summer off. So it's yours to do what you want. You have no obligations with the University of Guelph to do to take on a summer job unless you wanted to. And then you're back in class in second year again, and you have two academic terms. And then uh, your, your first work term here would be the first summer after second year. Um, so typically at Guelph, that's, that's fairly common that a lot of your work terms will start in second year or um, even after second year. So often you've actually done half of your degree before you're even out there in, in the workforce. In the third year on this one, you can see that there's two back-to-back -back work terms lined up. So that's where it's up to you. You have the choice to line up two different jobs for four months each, or you can spend one eight month term somewhere. It's important to know with co-op that you are responsible for securing your own co-op job, but we do provide you with lots of resources and assistance. So you usually have exclusive co-op coordinators with every degree program. You do a man mandatory co-op preparation course as well. Um, so all of that, uh, we have our own job boards and everything internally, and that just helps our co-op students with the job search. And with that, we'll now dive into the academic STEM program, starting with S, which is for science. So our Bachelor of Science program is one of our largest degrees here with 18 majors or areas that you can specialize in. We normally divide them into physical sciences that are more related to chemistry and physics, and then biological sciences, which focus more on human and animal health, nutrition, and molecular biology. Anything with a little red square next to it means it is available in co-op. So those of you interested in healthcare have several options from either section, including something like physics, neuroscience, or biomedical toxicology, just to name a few. In biological and pharmaceutical chemistry, you actually have the option to do a local exchange with nearby Seneca College and take courses in your third year in applied areas like pharmaceutical formulations, manufacturing, and advanced drug analysis. One of our physics graduates complemented his degree with a minor in computer science and worked on the movie Shrek, where he was able to add in the shadows to make the animations look more realistic. In biomedical science and human kinetics, our students are among the only undergraduates able to participate in a human anatomy dissection lab. 
So for those future doctors and healthcare practitioners, there's a major advantage to studying these at Guelph. So this is a perfect place for me to introduce our first science student, Amelia. So Amelia, if you want to come on camera now and just chat a bit about uh, each of the points on screen now briefly, and then I'll ask you some questions. But please introduce yourself and just let everybody know what drew you to Guelph and why chemistry? Of course. So again, hi, guys. My name is Amelia. I'm a second year biological and pharmaceutical chemistry student. I'm also in co-op and actually on my first co-op term right now. I'm originally from Pickering, Ontario, which is fairly close to Toronto. So the school is about just over an hour away from where I kind of grew up. Um, the main reason I chose my program in this biological and pharmaceutical chemistry is because of the bio biology aspect in chemistry. The one thing that's really cool with this specific program and that makes it a little bit different than a straight chemistry um, major is the fact that it does have that biology aspect, which gives me more electives in the biological field, which I really love because I um, considering going into some kind of like healthcare, like research, things like that. So for my G reason, so the reason why I ended up choosing the University of Guelph is mainly because the campus is absolutely stunning. Um, the day I came to visit the campus, I fell in love. I also love the fact that the campus is fairly compact. So it's not ginormous that I'm running like 15 minutes from class to class. Basically, there's no more than a 10 minute walk for me to get from one class to another. Another major reason that I chose to come to the University of Guelph is because of this program. I absolutely love the idea of the program and the fact that when I was looking in the brochure, it gave me so many future career options. I could go anything from forensics to uh, medical research, which I absolutely loved. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Um, and so far, uh, now that you're in your second year of your program, um, can you think of like a, an interesting course that you've taken in your program so far that you really enjoyed and just share a bit about it with us? For sure. Yeah. So probably one of the most interesting courses I've taken so far was actually last semester. So in the fall, and that was principles of toxicology. So basically principles of toxicology or for what toxicology is, if you don't know, basically it's talking about poisons and basically things that can go wrong with different kind of chemical compounds. And the one really cool thing about principles of toxicology is it's very introductory. So we actually do environmental toxicology. So um, chemicals and things like, like pesticides that if they get into the environment, into waterways, um, how they can negatively affect the environment. We also do biomedical toxicology, which is kind of like how poisons and things like and um, chemical compounds can negatively impact the human like the human body. So that was really interesting to see kind of like the complete um, array of how things can negatively affect. We also had like chemical toxicology in there, which is specifically how the chemicals work to have a negative impact as well as regulatory. So just kind of like different levels, like how much do you need of something before it actually comes toxic because Technically, it's the dose that makes the toxin, not the toxin itself, because any little thing, generally, it kind of depends. So, yeah. Awesome. That's a great answer. I'll ask you one non-academic question, too. So um, if you cast your mind back to first year, uh, did you live in residence? And if so, what was your room arrangement like? Like, did you live in a solo, a double, a triple? And how did you find that experience? I did live in residence, yes, and I was in a single, so I had a room to myself. Um, I personally loved my residence experience. I found I made a lot of friends in residence, even though I was in a room by myself. I became really close with a bunch of the girls on the floor, which was really nice to kind of make friends because I was kind of like living next to somebody who I didn't know because when I came to the university, I didn't come necessarily with a friend. So it was really nice to be in residence because I was able to make friends really quickly. I was also able to play intramurals through residence. So they have um, intramural dodgeball. So it was basically my residence would play against other residence buildings, which was super duper fun. Um, also, I love the convenience of having like the dining halls in my residence building, which was really convenient if I wanted a snack late at night. <laughs> Definitely, which all of us did, so that's okay. <laughs> sure. Thanks so much for your answers there. If anybody has any further questions uh, for Amelia, please pop them in the Q&A, and then at the end of the session, I'll come back and see what we can answer together. So thanks for now, um, Amelia. Thank you. And
And actually, while we're on the subject of residence, um, I'll also just mention Guelph does also offer what's called academic clusters. So if you want to live on the same floor as um, other students that are in the same program as you, so maybe you want to live with other science students or art students or business students, et cetera, um, then that is possible. There's actually a box that you just check on your residence application and it says, do you want to live in an academic cluster? And you can just check that box. Um, and then that's just an opportunity for you to live and learn with like-minded people in the same degree as you. So there's several reasons why one would want to study science here, and one of them includes our facilities. So we have the largest DNA bank in North America. So every living uh, animal and plant is actually assigned a barcode. So we can identify all the different species. And then all of that information is stored in a library, if you will, or like a digital catalog. Um, so all around the world, we have scientists, geneticists, and researchers come to our school to access those barcodes that we have as part of their research. We also have the Hagen Aqualab on site, which can simulate any aquatic environment in the world. So this is the center for studying things like behavior, disease, genetics, all on aquatic animals that live in a variety of water habitats. And I love that our physics department at Guelph has helped NASA, where one of our physics professors actually built an important instrument that lives on the Mars rover, which is um, which it, it analyzes mineral content of the rocks on Mars, which was a major part of the mission that it was sent to do to determine if life on Mars is possible. So we actually are one of the universities that has a control room that communicates directly with NASA. Other fields that your Bachelor of Science can lead you to in terms of career outcomes uh, could include, this is not an exhaustive list at all, but just a small snapshot, but things like nuclear energy, forensic science, environmental analysis, drug development, quantum computing, academia and teaching, wildlife conservation, the list is endless. Even if your uh, major is not available in co-op, as we mentioned, there's still plenty of ways to get that hands-on learning through things like labs, research, and field courses. So some cool field courses that if you're a Bachelor of Science or related uh, uh, field um, that you wanted to take could be right here in Ontario. But some of those field courses actually will take you to Nova Scotia and you can do some oceanography work on the Atlantic. Or you could go to the Midwest uh, in the US for a crop science tour or even find yourself in Costa Rica studying agriculture and visiting coffee and pineapple plantations. Uh, our first year labs can have an average of about 24 to 30 students. Um, so that's a great ratio to have and probably very similar to what a lot of you are used to in high school, which is nice. And here's a snapshot of what some of your typical first year courses can look like depending on whether you're in the biological or physical science majors. We won't go through this in any real depth, but uh, I'd say if you're interested, just scan that QR code on the left if you're interested in seeing the specifics for your major. But first year, you can see pretty generally, is about establishing the solid fundamentals across all the sciences. So biology, chemistry, physics, and also math. Okay, and I'd like to uh, introduce our second and final science representative, Laura. So she's a graduate and proud alumni from our Bachelor of Science program. So Laura, if you'd like to come on screen now and just uh, as well, uh, take a moment to introduce yourself to our guests through the points listed here, and then I'll ask you a couple questions about your experience as well. Sounds good. Hi again, everyone. I'm Laura. Um, yeah, like Pervy said, I did my undergrad at Guelph in human kinetics and I minored in nutrition, but I wasn't done studying at Guelph yet. And I'm now doing my master's here as well in human health. Um, I'm from King, Ontario, so I'm not too far either from Guelph. I'm just about an hour away. I had a few different reasons why I chose Guelph. Um, this has been touched on by a few people now, but when you come to the campus, you'll feel the vibe of Guelph and you'll know if it's for you. Like I felt on my first campus tour, the campus is beautiful. The people are really nice. And like that homey vibe of Guelph and like the small town down to earth vibe was really apparent to me. And like that really stuck with me. It was similar to where I grew up and I really liked that feeling. I also played varsity soccer at the University of Guelph. So that was a big part of my decision, the soccer program here. But whether you like anticipate being an athlete here or not, the athletic facilities at Guelph are amazing. They're like newly renovated. They're huge. There's so much space for like all different types of activity, which was really important to me. I've been an athlete my whole life. So the athletic facilities here were also a drawing factor. And the program, not a lot of schools have the human kinetics program, which was really like for me a big question because I wasn't sure what the difference was. But the more I learned about it, like I really liked the human kinetics compared to the kinesiology at, at um, some other schools, like human kinetics was just more broad. And there were some more unique opportunities like the anatomy lab that's at Guelph that 
um, was really one of the only schools that had that. So those couple things about the program were really interesting to me. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so yeah, as she mentioned, she's a graduate of the human kinetics program, which is, and as she touched on as well, one of the exclusive perks for um, our Bachelor of Science students, only if you're enrolled in two specific majors, one of which is human kinetics, the other is biomedical science, is that those students have exclusive access to the human cadaver lab, which is where you can actually dissect real deceased human bodies. So out of 18 science majors, only two have this exclusive ability to unlock those privileges. So again, if you're interested in human healthcare and medicine, then Guelph is one of the few places that lets you get that hands-on opportunity at the undergraduate level. You normally have to wait until getting into medical school. So Laura, you did that human cadaver lab. So uh, tell us more. How did you find that experience? Yeah, um, definitely super cool. It's something I like really was interested in and I really enjoyed. And I mean, I'm sure maybe there's some people on the call who are like, oh, that's not for me. But like, if you're interested in biology and you're interested in like medicine or any clinical practice, like it's truly an experience that like will change your perspective and it makes you gain such an appreciation. But it, it's really cool. Like you get to go into the lab. Um, there's lots of different cadavers, lots of different things you learn about. And you get to go in with a small group of students in the same class. So um, for human kinetics, it's in your third year, you're taking anatomy, you're learning about the entire body's anatomy, and you're in a small group, and you can literally do the dissections with your group. Um, and then if you're like, I really am interested in this, but I'm not sure I'm like ready to do the dissections, you can also take the course in a pro section, where you're not actually doing the dissection, but you still get to see everything, you still get to like touch everything. But yeah, it's super cool. Like you're walking around that lab as a third year student, like fully with bodies with brains with anything you want to learn about and there's even more opportunities that you can like volunteer in that lab if you're really interested in it or take another course in the anatomy in fourth year so if that's your thing like there's lots of opportunity to keep being in there and research in there definitely a unique experience that not many people I know have gotten to do so it's really cool amazing yeah I know that that's something that a lot of students really look forward to Mm -hmm. um, and we can see on screen now that you've also uh, got a minor in nutrition. So can you let us know at what point did you decide to add that in and what prompted you to do that? And how do you find it complements your work? You're also a research student uh, doing your master's. So does it tie into what you're studying now? Yeah, um, I chose to add my minor in second year at some point throughout second year. Um, the reason I chose to do that specifically for me was I had already taken human kinetics requires some nutrition courses. So I had a little bit of a background in nutrition and I really enjoyed those courses. And with human kinetics, because you're learning about a lot of nutrition anyway, there's a lot of overlap between the nutrition minor and the human kinetics major. So to add that minor, I really only had to take a few additional courses, basically just make my electives nutrition courses. Um, so it didn't add any extra time or anything like that for me. And I got to take get like that extra thing on my degree. But I knew I really liked the nutrition courses anyway. So like adding those in as my electives was something I had probably planned to do either way. Um, I guess the minor was just like making it official that I was taking those courses and getting that extra education. My research now is in the human health and nutritional sciences department. So I guess it's a little tied in. I don't really do specific nutrition research, but that was more of like an interest thing for me that I like those courses. So I decided like I might as well put the minor on. Um, there's lots of minors at Guelph that like you already take some of the courses in your program. So if you talk to your program advisors about like potentially adding minors, it's not like they add extra semesters or extra time a lot of the time. Exactly. Yeah. Great answer. And that's a great point. So if anybody's wondering, how do you go about that process of adding in a minor? Don't worry. You don't have to have that. If it have that decided at this point or on your application for, you know, OUAC on the Ontario University's Application Centre. Um, a lot of you may not know that you're going to even declare a minor. So after you've taken a couple of courses at university, maybe you'll, uh, you know, kind of take the plunge and formally declare it as Laura did. But and in that case, you just go to your program counselor and they kind of organize and arrange uh, the paperwork for you to get that formally added onto your degree. But um, again, a minor is totally optional. So um, uh, but it's not something you need to um, actively be thinking about just yet. But thank you, Laura. Uh, if anyone has any questions for Laura as a human kinetics graduate, please pop them in the Q&A um, and we'll, we'll, we will circle back to those at the end. But I'm going to move on um, at this point and we're going to just cover one more uh, degree. It's not Bachelor of Science, um, but it's still health focused and does overlap quite a bit. So it is called the Bachelor of One Health. We won't spend too much time here, but I'll briefly uh, um, go over what it, what it entails. 
So this undergraduate program is the only one of its kind in all of Canada. So there are other universities where you can take a course in One Health. We are one of the only universities, we are the only university that has it in an actual uh, four-year undergraduate program. So if you've heard of One Health or you, or you haven't, what it is is it's an approach or a philosophy that says to create lasting solutions to health on this planet, you have to consider these three pillars together. And they are human health, animal health, and ecosystem health. This program is also available in co-op. And instead of having a major, you actually choose one of the areas of emphasis uh, that are just at the bottom of the slide here. So you'll see that they all have the word health in common, um, but it's the first and second word on each line that's different. So whether you study health with a focus on disease or health with a focus on environment or culture or policy, that will determine the exact courses that you take. But knowing that you can broadly study health and use it to apply to fields like law, medicine, environmental science, uh, business, government. Um, so I've always found this program to be incredibly versatile and think it would open up a lot of doors for you in terms of career options. It wasn't available as a program back when I was a student, but I would say that if it was, I think this would have definitely gotten an application from me. Okay, and now I'll pass this section over to Hillary and invite her to come on screen and she'll take you all through our accredited Bachelor of Engineering program. Thanks, Perby. Um, you can go right to the next slide because there's a lot of reasons why to choose BEng. So I've had so many why BEng points here that I've had to put them on two slides for you. Um, right at the top there is complete four major design projects and interdisciplinary teams. So this is one of the reasons to choose Guelph. Um, a lot of schools have you go in as, let's say, a mechanical engineering student and you're just with that mechanical group all the way through. At Guelph, while you do differentiate, you also have common courses, and these are design courses. I do have a slide and a few slides from here that we will talk about design further on. Next is strong community. You ask any student in Guelph Engineering why they chose Guelph, and more often than not, it's going to be the strong community at Guelph. So this will be your family away from home. Next is we are ranked 16 out of 20 on McLean's list of top engineering programs in Canada for last year. And also the BEng, once you've completed a BEng at Guelph, this makes you eligible to pursue a professional engineer certification through Professional Engineers Ontario. Um, what this means is our um, program has the academic requirements that qualify students to pursue this professional designation. Last on this slide is our supportive academic environment. So in Guelph, we have three academic advisors or program counselors. And they have all taken the engineering program, so they are there for if you need an online appointment or if you want to meet in person, anything course related, they're there to answer questions. In addition to that, we have a peer-led group, which is called the Engineering Peer Helpers, and they're there to set up any study groups or help you with any of your design projects. We'll go to the next slide. So right at the top here, so we know that school can't all be about academics. So in engineering, we have 14 engineering student clubs. We've just listed a handful of them here. These are some of the more popular and popular ones, I want to say. So Concrete Toboggan, Robotics Team, the Griffin Racing, which is the photo on this slide here. I believe that car was from right before COVID. Uh, Women in Science and Engineering, or WISE, Engineers Without Borders, and of course, we have a lot more. At Guelph, it's creator-owned intellectual property. So any ideas that you have at Guelph are the property of you. So Guelph does not take property over any of your ideas, creations, or design. At Guelph, there's an emphasis of to, or an emphasis towards hands-on collaborative learning. So that is evident by our design spine. Lastly, on this page, if you love Guelph so much after your bachelor program, you can stick around for a graduate program to further your studies in engineering. Those, of course, are the Master of Engineering, Master of Applied Science, or the PhD program. Next is the core foundation at Guelph. So like I said before, a lot of schools will have you take a year one engineering. We have something very similar, but it's a little bit different. So students come in and take all the courses on the left side of this screen. So this is the interdisciplinary foundation. And then on the right side of the screen, those are the two courses that differentiate you right away in first year. So the colored circles on the right, those represent the majors that we have at Guelph. So from left to right in the first section there, we have biological, biomedical, environmental, and water resources, and they take general chemistry too and intro to programming. Next, we have computer and systems, and they of course take the harder programming courses, that's introductory programming for engineers, 
and object-oriented programming for engineers. So if you're interested in programming or coding, those are the majors for you. And then lastly, taking intro programming and their first elective already in first year is our mechanical students. So this is the interdisciplinary design sequence. So it sort of represents a spine through your entire program at Guelph. So in first year, you will take a mixed major design challenge. So it's, it's more popularly known as a teddy bear wheelchair. You get a kit with a Meccano set and an Arduino and you have to program a car. In year two, it's prototype design and build challenge. So this is also known as a 3D printed Kinder Egg toy design. You need to design your toy in SolidWorks or AutoCAD and it's 3D printed and it has to be assembled and it performs an action. Uh, year three, so up until this point, you've been given the problem. So year three, you have to design a problem or define the problem and design a creative solution around that problem. Year four, you take it one step further. This is your final capstone design project. This sort of wraps up your time at Guelph and you're creating a presentation, a prototype and you present at design day. The programs on, oh, sorry. <laughs> The program's on the right side of your screen. So first you have these major four design components of your entire studies at Guelph. But on the right, there is a lot more than this list that I've listed here, but you can take design courses specific to your major as well. So we can go to the next slide. All right, so we've got three engineering students here today. I think two of them are mechanicals and Emma is environmental. Um, so if I'm going to call on Raphael since he is on the left, but he has also just been renamed. I think he will be the, the incoming president for your year if you choose well. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Raphael. I'm a third year mechanical engineering student um, on my second co-op term currently. Um, and I'm going into the mechatronic stream um, of mechanical engineering. Um, like I mentioned, I'm from Mississauga, Ontario, so not too far from here. Um, and my G reasons why I came to Guelph, I came back in 2019 um, just to visit a friend. Um, and I saw the Formula SA team just rolling down the road with our car. And there's a whole group of them just running along. And that's just really the community that um, I really wanted to have. And that's really what I feel today. It's just a really great community um, that everyone really gets along really well. Um, and you meet people from other majors, other programs, which is really cool. Um, so that's really great. And the great food. I just, I, I couldn't stop hearing about all the great food that was um, getting cooked up at Guelph, so it, was, it, it it does live up to the to the expectation. Definitely, one hundred percent recommend it. So now you mentioned the FA, FSA racing team. Uh, were you a member of the team? Or are you still a member of the team? Uh, in first year, I was. Um, I was part of the low voltage. So recently, they've moved into um, doing an electrical car. Um, so in first year, I was, and then I moved towards um, our engineering society, which is our student body government group. Um, that kind of oversees a lot of the events, um, a lot of um, advocacy that goes on for engineering students. Um, so I've definitely, I've definitely been in, around in a, a part of a lot of clubs um, over my years. Engineers for Sustainable World. Um, I know Emma and Gage can talk about GNCTR, the Concrete Toboggan Team. So um, we have really great clubs. That's a hundred percent. Like they're really, really um, involved in our community. Um, they really like to. I reach to students to come in and have fun and through those clubs and meet people and network. So I would 100% recommend joining a club. Great. Thank you, Raphael. So we'll go to Emma next. So I'll let you go through your intro and then I'll ask you some questions about mm -hmm. design. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name's Emma. Um, I am majoring in environmental engineering. I've always been uh, a big outdoorsman I guess and so I felt like this was a great opportunity for me to make an impact on the uh, protecting the natural environment and I've also chosen to minor in project management so through my time uh, involved in clubs here at Guelph I've moved into some leadership roles and I thought this really would complement my studies and where I want to go in my career. Um, I'm from Brantford Ontario so again about an hour away it's not a long drive um, and then my G reason why so uh, I heard a lot about the supportive and welcoming reputation that Guelph had from my family members and friends who'd gone here uh, when I told them I applied. And so that was really important to me going into engineering, uh, having a good kind of support group uh, and network of my peers, uh, knowing that that degree program could be difficult at times. And I can say that it certainly has lived up to expectations. Um, there's so much opportunity for collaboration and support 
uh, through our student clubs, a lot of the events that are run, uh, as well as through our multidisciplinary focus on design and all those different courses you can take with people from other majors. Now, Emma, I know that our Enviro students and our water resources students, I think I saw one of the students that is attending this is interested in water resources or has applied. Um, mm -hmm. Those two students get to take a lot of outdoor labs. Is, is there a favorite lab that you've taken? Oh, wow. Yeah. So this past semester, I took uh, hydrology. It's one of the common third year courses between Enviro and water. Uh, so we completed a stream gauging lab uh, here in Guelph in the Speed River. So we met our lab tech uh, downtown and got suited up in our hip waders and went out and we measured the speed of the water traveling through the river uh, across like the cross section of the river. So that was really cool to incorporate a lot of the kind of math that um, I built the foundation in in my first and second year and then apply it to the environmental field specifically. Thanks, Emma. So now we will speak with Gage. Hey, everyone. Hey, Gage, yourself. <clears throat> um, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm from Aurora, Ontario, which is just over an hour away. It's um, 40 minutes north of Toronto. Um, so my major is in mechanical engineering, and then I've chosen a area of interest in sustainable and renewable energy. So that kind of broadens my elective choices that I've been taking. Um, yeah, so my G reason why is, like a lot of people have mentioned here, the beautiful campus, it's just, it's, it's really, it, it's, it's really nice to, to like walk outside and just kind of the, see the campus and the, the surroundings, and all that stuff. <clears throat> and then additionally, just the co-op program, um, before when I was, uh, applying to my universities and going into first year, I kind of researched on Guelph and I read about the co-op program and I just learned about what they had to offer and just the amount of co-op, uh, possibilities that they had. So that kind of brought me in here. So those are probably my, my two reasons why. Great. Those are good reasons. I'm going to ask each of you because I kind of skipped over asking you about design, but design is a huge component of engineering. A lot of the hands-on making, designing, creating. Uh, what was your favorite design course and why? And I'll start with Raphael. So my favorite design course was actually one we took um, this past year. It's one of our core mechanical courses um, and it's called machine design. So it's um, we apply a lot of hands-on learning in that course. We get to go into the machine shop. Um, we get to use some of the, the machinery that they use to actually um, produce this stuff in the real industry. Um, so it, it, that was super cool. We were able to, in a group of three, um, we were able to make a, a bucket elevator and it was really cool. We, we um, had some electrical components to it. Um, we had to order our own parts through our endowment fund. So that was really cool. Um, we had a lot of support from our professor, our TAs. Um, and it was a very much... Um, a hands-on course, right? We, we got to learn the ins and outs of manufacturing and kind of mechanical engineering while also learning the uh, theoretical parts, um, like every all the calculations that go behind it, all the physics um, and everything surrounding that. So that was a really, really cool experience. Great, what about you, Emma? Yeah, the design course that really sticks out for me was Design One, which you already kind of touched on, Hillary. Um, the course is, does have kind of a different or the, rather the project has a different focus every year. So when I took that course, there were two components to it. Uh, we were required to build a car using like a mechanical build kit and then program it using Arduino. And then on top of that, we had to build a boat that was mechanically powered out of recyclable materials. So um, for me, that was really interesting because I don't have a background in coding, but I ended up getting pretty involved uh, in programming our car to complete the course that had been assigned to us. So uh, I challenged myself and got to learn a new skill right off the bat in the first semester of my degree. On top of that too, we were put in multidisciplinary teams for this. So uh, I was able to learn a lot from some of my peers who'd had experience um, and, and were in computer engineering who had programmed. Um, and then I ended up meeting one of my best friends through that group because you're paired up with, uh, I guess, random people which is a great opportunity to meet new people. And then, yeah, it's a really great introduction to the design process. And it just shows you uh, like how iterative it can be uh, when you're problem solving in engineering. Great, thanks. And what about you, Gage? 
Yeah, so I'd say my uh, favorite design course is probably Design 2, where, um, as you mentioned earlier, the design and build project of 3D printing the toy. So um, I'll talk about the other one that we did. And it involved reverse engineering a mechanical piece of equipment. So for our group, we were given a sewing machine. And the task was to basically disassemble the whole thing and to analyze and document where each of the components uh, fit and how they all worked with each other and how it all collectively worked to make the sewing machine function. And then from there, you had to individually, or you were in a group of with uh, four other students. So as a group, you had to model the whole um, piece of equipment in SolidWorks and then make an assembly that kind of like assembled and animated the sewing machine in its function. So it was really cool to take a piece of equipment and basically tear it apart and then kind of um, <clears throat> identify like how the whole, all the pieces worked with each other and then build it again, which is pretty similar to what my uh, current co-op uh, work term is doing. So it was like really interesting to gain the hands-on experience working with machinery and then learning how each component works with each other to um, accomplish your overall task that is meant for. Awesome. I think that sort of resonates with a lot of students that want to take engineering. I often will ask students when they come for a tour, so why engineering? And they'll often say, I like taking things apart and putting it back together. So that the reverse engineering project is really cool for students. So I think that is it. I will send it back to Pervy. Okay, thanks everyone, all the engineering panelists there for the great information. So if there's any questions anybody uh, in the audience has for our students, please put them in the Q&A for us to review and we'll see what we can circle back to together. And now we'll move on to the Bachelor of Computing degree and what makes it unique. So the title of this degree uh, right off the bat is somewhat unique to Guelph as there's very few degrees um, at the undergraduate level in Canada called a Bachelor of Computing. So at other schools you can study computing but it actually results in an arts degree or an applied science degree um, or engineering degree. So we're lucky to have it both actually. You can pursue uh, computer engineering as a Bachelor of Engineering degree but also you can pursue it as a Bachelor of Computing degree. And the main draw for this program, in contrast to the engineering one, is that there is no science needed to enter into this program. And there's no science in the curriculum either, unless you choose to add it in as an elective. So that's a huge advantage for those students who want to avoid the traditional sciences. There's two majors in this degree, and you would choose between either computer science or software engineering. And I'll get to the differences between the two on the next slide. The interdisciplinary structure of the Bachelor of Computing degree here means we want you to take courses in non-computing subject areas as well. Um, and so our software engineering major is not considered an uh, accredited engineering major in case anybody was interested in getting that uh, PEng designation. All the major tech commerce companies or major Canadian banks or government offices, large healthcare facilities, they all have central offices or headquarters pretty much within a one hour radius um, from Guelph. So we kind of call it North Silicon Valley here. So when you think of summer jobs, co-op placements, internships, graduation opportunities, they are all within really close proximity to Guelph. So that's a really big advantage that not only our students can enjoy, but local employers have come to rely on as well. Another huge advantage is just how broad your knowledge and skill set is when you graduate. So we do have a mandatory component to this program called the AOA or area of application, where our students have to identify a secondary area of interest and then take eight courses in it. Remember, if you want to make it a minor and push it to 10 courses, then you can officially declare it as uh, such and then that would show up as your transcript. But an AOA or just the area of application uh, would not show up on your transcript. There's over 40 different options that you can pick some and, I, and I've list, listed some here and it just helps you look at a problem through multiple lenses, use a different dialogue, and taking that multidisciplinary approach to your projects, and that really sets Guelph graduates apart. At Guelph, we recognize that some fields like computing and STEM in general have historically been more masculine, um, and we want to change that narrative and make an inclusive environment for women and non-binary people to feel comfortable to join and excel in their chosen field. So we have clubs like GWIX or Guelph Women in Computer Science to create those female communities and they host uh, technical workshops, uh, female industry speakers um, to help support you as needed. 
not only do you study your core computing courses here that are part of your mandatory curriculum, um, and then as well your chosen area of application, but you can also fill your free credits with electives from different areas within computing, like trying a game design course or artificial intelligence. There's lots of options on how you might want to customize your degree. So when differentiating between the two, so what's the difference between computer science and software engineering? <clears throat> and they are both available in co-op as well, by the way. Computer science will be your more traditional computing degree. There's a few sample courses listed there for each that are unique to each major. Um, but one key uh, distinction is there's more math courses that you're expected to take in computer science than software engineering. In your upper years in computer science, though, there's fewer required courses that you're expected to take, which means there's more freedom to take the electives that really interest you. So you can really tailor your degree to match your interests. And in software engineering, there's going to be those fewer math courses, um, and you'll still take some of the traditional computer science aspects, but your focus is going to be on software design and development. So every year you take a course called software design, and it could be looking at legacy systems or best practices for code development. In software engineering, there is a real focus on group work and collaboration as well, and you're taught project management methodologies as well within your teams. And now I'd like to introduce you to uh, our computing student, Rashi, if you'd like to join me on screen. And um, same thing, just introduce yourself uh, to our guests with a little more depth with the points listed here. And um, so what drew you to Guelph and why computing? Sure. Um, so my name is Rashi. I'm a fourth year software engineering uh, major with a co-op and a minor in statistics, which I can talk about later. I uh, mentioned earlier I'm from India, it's more specifically Indore, which is a very foodie city, um, actually. Um, and I love my hometown. But Guelph has been my home for the past three years, and it has been fantastic. Uh, my uh, my G reason why um, is definitely um, the location, as we talked about, uh, as Purvi talked about before, and also also, uh, because it was, but because I have some family here, um, and they were able to like talk me through the pros of the campus, even though I couldn't be here for entirety of my first year, actually, because uh, it was during COVID. Awesome! Thank you for sharing that. And as a computing co-op student, I know you've done some interesting work terms. Um, so, can you share one of your experiences and what you learned at a company that you worked at? Um, sure. So I'm actually on co-op right now. So um, so not like uh, other students who are here who are maybe in the middle of midterms. I am in, uh, in the middle of the co-op term. Um, I've actually had the opportunity to work at really good, um, really good co-ops and learn lots from it. Um, so my first one was at the university as a research assistant. The second one was at Nokia, uh, where I got to work with the um, hardware as well as the software. So I could make a code change and then see how it changes their um, uh, their network architecture and all of those things. Um, my third one was actually at Amazon um, previous summer, where I got to do more of a full stack development role as well as security. Um, and currently I'm working at Arctic Wolf, which is a cybersecurity company. Um, and I am working uh, at with their sensors and scanners. Um, and it's re it's been really interesting so far. Awesome, that sounds great, thank you. Um, I'll also ask you, what were some programming languages that you learned as a computing student? And did you need any previous coding or programming experience when you started this program? Um, absolutely not. If I had needed that, it would have been a problem for me because I knew nothing um, in terms of coding when I started. So um, at the University of Guelph, we start off with uh, C, which is a relatively low level language. Um, and it teaches you a lot about how uh, programming works behind the scenes almost because you have to do your own memory management. Uh, we also learn Python. Um, we also learn languages like Python, um, Java for object-oriented programming, um, JavaScript for front-end front -end development for the Angel of Death course, uh, which is really interesting name and it has history behind it. Um, so yeah, um, all of those things as well as a lot of design principles on how to use those tools that are the programming languages. Perfect, thank you so much for sharing that. So I'll move on now and I'll call you back on screen when we get to the math section because Rashi also has a statistics minor that she can talk about. So we'll learn more about uh, how that intersects with her work. Sure, catch you later. So 
here's a quick look at the first year courses that you take in your computing degree. So if anybody was interested in what that looks like, um, you can take a look at it here between the two majors. So I'll just leave that up for just a couple seconds. Okay. And then the last of our STEM programs is the M for mathematics. So we've had our mathematical science major exist for many years, but it was actually part of our Bachelor of Science degree. Um, so I'm proud to announce that in 2024, um, and some of you may have already gotten your offer to this, so uh, you'd be part of the, the first uh, incoming cohort. And this is the first time we're able to offer the newly developed Bachelor of Mathematics degree. So this program is really unique because it gives students a chance to study math, but also choose what other types of courses you would want as part of your degree. Many math students love math, but don't enjoy science. So this degree was created kind of similarly to computing in that students can use their electives to complement math with other subject areas and not be required to have to have those high school science courses for admission. You have the option here to further take your mathematical science major and choose an area of emphasis if you wanted to in either mathematics or statistics. After your four years, you have a set of valuable skills like quantitative analysis, modeling, critical thinking and problem solving, and those can be applied to absolutely every field. In the province of Ontario, they also released some exciting news saying that they anticipate statisticians and mathematicians to be among the top 10 fastest growing science-related occupations over the next five years. So that just really tells us where the province is going to be expanding on for job growth, and that will include graduates from this group. Some of the roles that our mathematical science graduates have had um, have succeeded in include policy, healthcare, medicine, wealth and asset management, etc. So Rashi, I'll call you back on screen and just ask you some questions about how you included statistics as part of your degree. So can you share with us when you decided to add this in as a minor? Um, yes. So uh, my decision to add it as a minor uh, kind of happened at the end of the first year and the starting of the second, uh, because I had taken um, the first statistics course um, in the winter of my first year, so the second semester of my first year. And that just really, uh, that course just really inspired me a lot in terms of statistics. Um, earlier, I used to think of statistics as just uh, calculating means and averages and all of that. Uh, but uh, the uh, but taking that co uh, course opened the gates to um, analysis and uh, critically analyzing any research that has been done. So I felt that that was one of the core skills that I would want to have. Um, and I also realized that learning statistics outside of school was kind of difficult. Um, also, it complemented my software engineering degree uh, very well um, to open opportunities into data. So uh, that's how I got started in it. Perfect. Um, and you're very involved at the university as well. So um, between your computing degree and also your statistics minor. So can you talk a bit about your role as a teaching assistant or a TA and any clubs students can get involved in relating to math? Sure. Um, so um, I've actually worked as a TA for the introductory computer science courses, as well as a TA in the Statistical Learning Center at the library. Um, Statistical Learning Center, uh, Center is a drop in help uh, table almost, uh, which is manned by TAs um, during all work hours at the library, um, which is just drop in help for um, the the courses uh, that are offered by statistics and math is al also available. Um, my experiences there have been amazing helping people get like get that hook in. Um, there are many um, there are many great opportunities to get involved as a math student as well. Um, we have a maths and stats club, which actually just released some really some merch, so I'm gonna buy that. Uh, but uh, they uh, they organize amazing events such as career nights, where um, they got like students from different um, stages in their education, as well as a professor to talk about um, their career opportunities. They have workshops in R um, and other uh, mathematical programming languages. So it's really good, great community. Uh, they have trivia, all of those um, interesting events. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, and I'll circle back to you shortly at the very end with any questions that we have for Rashi. So whether it's for her computing um, degree or her um, math minor, uh, if anyone has any questions for her, please pop them in the Q&A. Thank you. And with that, we've completed the academic part of the presentation. So we'll just spend the last just couple of minutes here just talking a little bit about your next steps as an applicant and just uh, reviewing any questions if there are any for our current students. 
So here are some dates that might be useful for you to know um, if you're applying this year. So the application deadline for the Ontario University Application Centre would have just passed, but if you are studying outside of Canada, that date did just get extended to April 1st, so you still have a few weeks to submit an application. And for everybody, remember that June 3rd is the last and final date to accept your offer and also to submit your residence application and deposit. So to get the whole complete list of dates and deadlines to help you with your planning, just uh, scan that QR code on the bottom left. And we would love to invite all of you that have joined us today to visit us on campus on Sunday, March 24th, where we have a university-wide open house happening. So you can see everything we've talked about today really come to life. You can attend academic program sessions, get a campus and residence tour, check out labs, lecture halls, and meet other current students and faculty. We've also got another set of open houses happening in May, and those are exclusively for students that have an admission offer and are just kind of making those uh, final decisions. Um, but it will be the same format and a lot of the information with that final future Griffin days uh, would be pretty targeted to what your first year will look like. And lastly, if you enjoy connecting with current students in your program or from your hometown, we have ambassadors from the University of Guelph on our UniBuddy platform. So you can make a free account on UniBuddy, search for the University of Guelph, and then find students to text your questions to about anything to do with living and learning at Guelph, and they will respond within 24 hours. And now we'll just take a moment. I'm just going to open up the Q&A here and just see if there is any questions that you submitted that I can direct to our student panelists. So just give me a moment. Okay, so a couple of different questions maybe around um, co-op, residence, I'm seeing some about vet school. That seems pretty popular. Um, let's try residence. Let's... Um, how about Gage, if maybe I can send this one to you? Um, we we heard from Amelia at the beginning, um, and she lived in a, a single room, and she talked about her residence experience. But Gage, yours was a little bit different. So if you want to come on screen and just share, what was your residence experience like, and how did you find it? Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I lived in uh, East. I lived in the Glengarry Towers, and I was in a suite with uh, me and five other people. And so my uh, suite was also mixed. So there's three guys and three girls. And each of us had singles within the suite. So it was pretty interesting to kind of still have a single room, but then I'm living with five other people in a suite style. So in my in my uh, room, we had a kitchen and a living a living room. So it was pretty interesting. It was kind of like an apartment style in that sense. So it was it was nice to to still be in first year, but then have more responsibilities in terms of cooking and cleaning. And that kind of prepared me for future uh, in second year and third year when I'm living off of campus. So it was really interesting to live in that uh, that arrangement. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, next question, um, Emilia, I'll um, direct this one to you if you'd like to come on camera. Um, I, it's about co-op. So we know you're doing uh, one of your co-op terms on campus right now. Can you tell us a bit about what that job search process has been like when you're trying to secure your co-op job? Yeah, of course. So um, I am currently on my first co-op term and actually working at the University of Guelph, which is great because I got to stay in my off-campus apartment and I didn't have to worry about trying to find a new place to live. So basically, as soon as the previous semester starts, that's when you're going to start to look for jobs. So I think it was something like a week or two into the fall semester is when the first round of um, jobs were being posted. And I was so this is on a website that is provided by the university. So you I think right away, there's something like 50 jobs posted and they uh, the jobs that you see are specific to your program and to your major. So you're going to see jobs that you would be able to apply to and you would be able to succeed in. So with that, um, you're making you're making up your resume, you're writing cover letters, things like that. And the university has a ton of support with this. So with the um, different on-campus resources, you're able to get people to like look over your resume, things like that. So then right away, and I think something like a week after that, you're pretty much you can start submitting applications and then you just kind of wait to hear about what's gonna, like what kind of opportunities you might get. Perfect, thank you. Um, and it looks like a lot of the questions have been answered in the Q&A. We'll, we'll leave it with one final one. Laura, I'll send this one to you. Um, 
you were a full-time student. You had a pretty demanding course load, right? With a major and a minor, you were captain of the varsity soccer team as well. Um, so what might you be able to share with our applicants who are just wondering, how do you how do you balance it all? What are some tips for incoming students? Sure, yeah. Um, I think definitely the, the biggest thing that I learned in my first couple of years during my undergrad and being busy was like accepting that it was going to be an adjustment period. So like understanding that you are going to feel busy and like you might feel stressed at times and like you might not do great on every single assignment, but like let yourself settle into that new normal that you have. Like Gage spoke a little bit about this too. Like you have other responsibilities, you're cooking your own food, you are maybe doing your own laundry, like other stuff like that, that it's not just school or for me, like it's not just soccer, but honestly, like there's so many resources at Guelph that you can talk to. Like there's student led tutor groups, there's your TAs, there's like resources for stuff outside of academics as well. And I think like getting comfortable with using those resources to like understand things are hard and like everyone at Guelph and in university in general, like understands that things are really busy and stressful and that's why there's so many resources. So kind of getting into that normal and understanding like this is my new schedule it's different than high school but you know I go to class at this time I eat at this time I do my homework at this time and like I use this resource to make sure I'm not struggling here and this to make sure that I'm doing well in this aspect of my life and like once you do the first year you're like okay now I know what I'm doing and you can start to like really enjoy it because you're like smoother along that ride perfect thank you so much for that Okay, so it seems we've answered everything so far. So uh, now we'll just let you know how to stay in touch with us after this webinar. So we hope you all found this STEM session really helpful and maybe it introduced you to something that you didn't know before. Please stay in touch with us after this presentation through any of the means on screen. For any program related questions or about student life, you can reach me at sepsinfo at uoguelph.ca. Uh, and we hope you can join us for that open house coming uh, this month on Sunday, March 24th. But if you can't, we do offer uh, monthly virtual live guided tours to view different areas on campus, and they are, are actually done by a current student. We're also on social media, so please give us a follow on all the accounts below to stay connected and aware of what's happening in our departments and at the university. At U of G Admission is probably the main one you want to follow, regardless of your program, um, primarily just so you can catch all the important news and get those uh, reminders of those important dates and deadlines as an applicant. Okay, and with that, our webinar is now done. So uh, we'll be turning our cameras off and just sticking around for a few extra minutes to answer any um, final questions that come up in the Q&A. But thank you all so much for joining us today. And we hope you are just as excited as us to have you attend the University of Guelph in September. So good luck to all of you who've applied and we'll say bye for now.